Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 81. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel, Biz, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 10, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet FV1, and FV stands for future value. Now, in the last video, we talked about compound and simple interest. Uh, and we saw our first use of the math formulas for future value and the FV function for calculating future value. So in this video, we want to see five examples. One, two, three, four, five. Here's our first example. Now I'm actually going to scroll over a bit here. Actually, no, I'll read it first and fill in the, the uh, blanks. If you deposit $5,000 in an account for five years that pays an annual rate of 5% compounded quarterly, what is the future value? All right. Um, here's the words for our var variables: present value, annual rate, compounding periods per year, years, period rate, which we have to calculate, and total number of periods, which we have to calculate. And finally, we'll do our future value. Um, here are the variables we have for our math formula that when we do it on paper or when we check it, we'll check it down here. And then here are the arguments we're going to need for our future value function. So let's go ahead and figure out present value. Now remember, when you deposit money in a bank, how much is it worth on the day you deposit? Well, 5,000. That's called the present value. So I'm going to type 5,000 here. It's tab. Looks like I need to do some uh, currency, so I'm going to control shift 4. All right, the annual rate, they say it's 5%, so I'm going to format as I type 5.00% tab. Number of compounding periods. Well, what does quarterly mean? Compounded quarterly. It means four times a year they're going to give us interest. Tab. And it says for five years, so five. All right, now we have to calculate our period rate, which is annual interest rate divided by n in our Excel function will be called rate. So when they go to calculate the quarterly interest, it's not the 5%, it's equals 5% divided by 4. So that will give us our period rate tab, so 1.25%. NPER, or total number of periods, right? That's all the number of periods that the bank uses to compound. Each one of those periods you'll get interest. So it's years times number of periods per year equals year five years times four. So that should give us 20 periods that they will calculate interest. Each time, remember like in the last video, they just add it in, add it in. So each time they go to calculate the next quarter's interest, there's more and more interest because you're earning interest on interest. Now I'm going to scroll over here. All right, our future value function, we saw this for the first time last time, equals FV. Now the last shoe with each one of these arguments here, remember we have to skip over the PMT because we don't have a regular payment. We just have some money that we put in present value, and then this will calculate the future value. So our rate, period rate, comma, NPR, total number of periods, comma, we have to skip that PMT, so we type a second comma. Notice there's nothing in that argument. You have to type that in there or it will not work. Now we have present value. Now remember, when you go to the bank, that $5,000 is coming out of your wallet. So you have to represent it in the financial functions in Excel as a negative. Remember, it's still yours, but from your point of view, it comes out of your wallet to the bank, right? From the bank's point of, uh, point of view, it's coming in to their bank account, right? So when you calculate, oops, look at that. I must be asleep at the wheel. I think that's the first time I've done this in the entire class, and this is video 81. Well, I guess one mistake is good. Remember, any number that can vary, put it in a cell and refer to it with a cell reference. All right, tab. I have my uh, speak cells on interest, so I'm going to turn that off. 6,410 and 19 cents. So you put in 5,000. Wow, and it went after five years, got a, about 1,400 bucks. So the interest is always future value minus our present value. Now I want to check this. Let's go ahead and do our math formula. Equals our present value times, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate. 
Now, when you're multiplying, I'm going to close parentheses. When you're multiplying here, and you have some number times, and then in parentheses, something plus something, the way you would do this is you'd say, hey, the 5,000 times 1, that would give you 5,000, and then the 5,000 times our period rate, and that would give you the interest. So whenever you see 1 plus some rate, that 1 represents the original principal, and that uh, rate of increase, because this is interest, represents the added interest. Ah, but that amount there, we need to raise, because this isn't just for one period. We have to raise it. And our formula is years times n, but we've already done that total number of periods. So that is our formula. I got my fingers crossed. Enter. 6,400. So we got the same thing. The only difference is what? Formatting. I could Control Shift 4, or I could leave it Control Shift 4, right? Gets ex the formats of the same way, or I could Control Z and leave it that way. All right, so that's pretty good. 5,000, you get a bunch of interest um, after five years. Let's go to our next sheet, FV2. If you deposit $25,000 in an account for 25 years that pays an annual rate of 4.5%, compounded semi annually, what is the future value? Well, what is semi annually? That means two times every year. All right, so present value, 25,000. I'm going to Control Shift 4 to format that. Tab, annual rate, looks like we're given 4.5%, so I'm going to type 4.50 and a percentage symbol to format as I type. Tab, the number of compounding periods, semi annually, that's 2. Years, it says 25. All right, our rate, we can say equals, it's the period rate, right? So we take our annual rate divided by number of compounding periods per year. OK, so 2.25%. NPER is going to be years, 25, times number of compounding periods per year. So there'll be total 50 periods where they're calculating interest. Our future value. OK, so we need our rate, our period rate, comma, our NPER, 50, comma, no PMT, comma, to skip it, present value, that's this 25,000. So when you put it in the bank, it's coming out of your wallet. So remember, it's a minus. And then I'm going to control enter, 76,000. Now, why is that so much? That variable right there, 25, is what determine is the most important variable for determining how big the final future value is. Right? The bigger the number of years, the more periods the interest gets to earn interest on interest. All right, a, our interest is always future value minus our present value. And now I'm going to check it down here. Equals present value times, in parentheses, 1 plus the period rate, caret, total number of periods. Well, OK, we got the same thing. Very good. Let's go look at our next example, FV3. If you deposit $100,000 in account for 35 years, that pays an annual interest rate of 5.75, compounded monthly, what is the future value? So here's an example, right? None of us have this kind of money to throw around, right? Well, most of us don't. But what if you get an inheritance or something, or you win the lottery? Why not just throw it in? I mean, you know, you, maybe you don't have a, a job right now, so you have to use this to live on. But if you do, just throw it in the bank and, what, and leave it there for a long time, right? So we get this inheritance or the lottery or something, 100K. Uh, maybe you won 115,000, so you went out and splurged 15,000, right? But you kept 100,000. So present value, that's the amount we put on the bank on the day we put it in there. Control Shift 4 to format it as currency. Annual rate, we were lucky enough to get like a CD, right? That had 5.75. So I'm going to type a percentage symbol to format as I type. Number of compounding periods, monthly means 12. Years, we said, hey, I'm just going to throw it in there and leave it there and forget about it. 35 years. The period rate, 5.75 divided by 12, because we need to figure out a period rate, which is a monthly rate. That's the rate we'll use to calculate, or the future value function we'll use to calculate each, each month's interest. Total number of periods, NPER, 
I'm going to say years, 35, times 12. Lots of periods there, 420. Future value, future value function. Rate, that means period rate, comma, NPER, that means total number of periods. There's no PMT here. We're not regularly putting amounts into the bank account. We just put one lump sum in. So we skip over that by typing comma. If you don't have those two commas, it doesn't work. Present value, minus, because it came out of my wallet, in or my purse, into the bank. So I'm going to type a minus, and then that. Control Enter. Railroad tracks. I was hoping to get this in dollars. No, no. That just means the column isn't wide enough. So I'm going to double click. Actually, no, I'm not going to double click. I'm going to it, it best fit to that little piece right there. Now I'm going to sc scroll over one. And then the, the big moment here, future value minus present value gives us what? Interest. $644,000. Right, we started with a lot, but look, that is the variable that matters the most. If I change this to 5, right, it goes from 100,000 to 133,000 100, approximately. We just didn't give it very much time for the interest to earn interest on interest, right? That's the idea behind compound interest. The longer you go, right, 10, 20, 35. Look at that interest grow. Compound. Let's go over to, oh, let's do our check equals present value times 1 plus our period rate. Close parentheses and shift 6 to get that caret, 420. The more those, the more of those there are, the bigger this gets to be. Looks like, wow, 74,000 right there. That's the interest. That's the future value. All right, let's go to example 4. If you deposit 5,000 account for five years that pays an annual rate of 5% compounded quarterly. Hey, let's not do quarterly. This was supposed to be daily. OK, so I'll show you my trick. Down here I have something that governs what happens up there. Whoops. Hey, look, it magically changed the word daily, right? So we did this all, all this stuff here, but interest is compounded daily. All right, so we're going to put 5,000 bucks in, 5,000, control shift 4, tab, annual rate. I'm just going to type 5.00%, format as I type, N, compounding periods per year, 365, for five years, our rate, annual divided by number of periods in the year. That's going to be pretty small. Now, that's formatting. It's probably not 0.01. If I expand this over here and increase the decimals, right? 1.4, 1.37. So there, it's uh, you can expand. Remember, formatting is a facade. It sits on top. But underneath, that number, that unrounded number is still there. All right, NPER, total number of periods. Years times number of compounding periods. Is it all right to go number of compounding periods times years? 100% yes. 1 times 2 is the same as 2 times 1. All right, and the future value, period rate times number of compounding periods, comma. We don't have any regular payments here, so we skip over that PMT. Ah, the present value, it is a minus. Control Enter. So after five years, we get about uh, 1,400. Well, let's do our check equals present value times in parentheses 1 plus the period rate, caret, shift 6, and we'll do our eight, uh, 1,825. I hope I said that right. And there we go. We get a match. What's our interest here? Future value minus present value. Now notice I went too far there, right? You see the little dancing ant, so I just back arrow. As long as the dancing ants are, whoops. As long as the dancing ants are partying, right, you could still move your arrows. All right, so I got it right. Enter. All right, our last example. Let's go over here. Now, sometimes you have a bunch of um, different options. But what I want to show here 
is the power of compounding interest. All of these have the same variables, and the only variable we're going to change is that one, years. All right, so you ready? Equals period rate, 5% divided by quarterly, and I'm going to copy that down, double click. NPER. It is years times number of compounding periods. Now, this will change all the way down. So when I double click, from 40 to 180. Future value, those are all relative SAW references, right? No problem. Our rate, period rate, NPER. So that's two cells to the left, one cell to the left, comma to skip that one, comma, and then minus one, two, three, four, five, six cells to my left. close parentheses, and then when I double click and send it down, that's the power of compound interest, right? So if you leave it in for 10 years, we're going to have 8,000, but if I leave it in for 45 years, I have 46,000. As you leave it in longer and longer, that interest keeps building up into the account. So each period that they calculate the period's interest, like the quarter interest. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because you have more and more interest to calculate the next interest payment on. All right, the interest, future value minus present value. We start out with 3,000 interest and go all the way up to 41. All right, and you can come over here and check this one if you want here. Um, in our next video, we'll actually look at some examples of daily interest. All right, see you next video.